Well, we're on to Season 4, Episode 6, but it's actually Part 2 of the program about making an acne thread to replace the uh, nut in the cross light. And as you'll recall, we had actually made the nut itself, but have yet to make the thread. And we've still actually got a few more adjustments and changes to make in the lathe, uh, such as changing the gear train from metric to imperial before going ahead with the actual uh, thread cutting. Now you probably recall it, uh, we had already made this um, blank for the nut. The hole has been bored to 8.5 millimeters, which should be about the right root diameter for the 7.7 inch thread. Um, and there's the tool that I made, which we've already talked about. And I've got that mounted in a, a boring tool holder. Check the uh, tip to make sure it was um, at center by swinging it around 180 degrees and checking it with the dead center in the tailstock and then swinging it back 180 degrees ready to use it. I've also adjusted the angle on the cross slide. Uh, now we can see from the tool here that we want to be advancing along, let's mark it here, this face here, this is the face we want to be moving the tool along. So we need to have the cross slide adjusted to that angle and we know that angle is 14.5 degrees. So now as I advance uh, the the uh, compound slide uh, it'll move along the right angle for that edge of the tool and that way it'll only be cutting mainly on one side of the tool. Um, actually I want to check the amount of uh, backlash that arisen across the slide before I start and can check it again later but the main reason I've got it out is to make sure that the shaft with the um, boring tool on it is actually in line with the lathe that has to be exactly parallel to the bed. Now I've got the uh, dial gauge set up here on the cross slide so I can see how much it moves. Let's zoom in a bit for you so you can maybe see the gauge. And I'll move the cross slide without grabbing hold of the compound slide and move it backwards and forwards. And it's moving about 10 divisions which is 0.1 millimetres. So I've got 0.1 millimetres uh, backlash here. Not quite as bad as I thought it would be actually. I've got, all, I've got no backlash here in the micrometer dial so I can, I can feel here there's nothing, no movement there, so that must be all in the thread. And considering that length, it's really not bad. Just pressing on it slightly changed it that much anyway. I think that might be good enough because if I move it again it probably won't be that good again next time. And now we find the gear train and we've got this compound gear in here that we're just converting to metric. Okay, so now you can see I've mounted the required gears. I found a 20 tooth gear that was actually uh, compounded with another gear. I took it off. It's keyweighed onto here. Uh, this is a 24 tooth one behind it. This is 24 here and this is 24 here. So this uh, shaft turns at the same speed as a spindle uh, and drives this 20 tooth gear, which is going to have to mesh with this 80 tooth gear, which then meshes with this 56 tooth gear. This other one's just here as a spacer. This one had a spacer behind it, and I, to make these gears mesh, I had to take a spacer off and put it around this side of the gear instead of behind it. Now we've got to make these gears all mesh together, and you do that by adjusting the banjo. So the banjo is clamped on with a square headed bolt here. You loosen that off, and then you can slide the banjo, at least it's actually always a bit tight. <coughs> so you can see that it'll move up and down once you've unlocked it. Actually, I made a mistake here. The uh, label on the back of the lathe seemed to indicate that 10 threads branch was B2, actually it should have been A3, there was a dent on the on the chart that made me misread it. Uh, fortunately I did find that mistake and correct it. Well I've actually got a bit of a quandary here because I've got my uh, lathe all set up here with the four jaw chuck and the work in there ready for turning the thread and I don't want to take that out and with an internal thread there's not really an easy way of checking the results, so checking that the gear setting is all correct. So I've decided that what I'll do is uh, just check that the lead screw is turning the right number of turns. Um, and the easiest way to do that is to set it on the A1 setting, which is 8 threads per inch. And that's a straight through setting, basically, because the lead screw is 8 threads per inch. And with 8 turns, it'll move along an inch. Okay, so I've got this in a 12 o'clock position. The, the um, key weight on the lead screw is in a 12 o'clock position. I turn this once, turn the chuck once and the keyway is back in the 12 block position, so that's correct. So we've got a one-to-one -one, uh, gear ratio between the chuck and the lead screw when it's set on, on eight threads branch, which is correct. So that means my gear train is correct. 
diameter I need for turning in here was 8.57 I think it was and uh, the drill I used of course was 8.5 so I've got to take out about uh, 0.4 of a millimeter out of the hole so I'm just doing a, a, um, a boring job right now I've uh, I set the cross slide actually now having done that turning operation I know that's the tool is right on the edge on the surface uh, where the thread is going to be started and when I'm actually cutting it I'm going to be using the compound slide set it's at 14 and a half degrees uh, and it's currently set on zero on the dial which I adjusted well so that it would match this and that's the starting point and the pitch is 0.1 so it's 0.05 inches and that's uh, 1.27 millimeters so that's already marked on here so I know how, how deep I need to go and I won't go all the way to that depth before checking and to check it I'm going to have to take the lead screw out of the cross slide um, test it and put it back in again so we're all set to actually start with cutting threads I'm going to leave the half nut engaged a lot of experts say not to use the reverse gear to go back because the, any slop in your system may not get taken up until it hits the thread and messes it up I haven't actually experienced that problem. I personally feel a lot more comfortable with using the reverse. Um, if I have it go a little bit outside the hole at the other end, then it gives a bit of a chance for the uh, for it to catch up. Uh, unfortunately, this is open-ended both ends of the thread, so it's got, it's, you've got room to do that. Now, backwards we go. Now we've got to set the depth of the next cut. Minus two. Plus point four again until we stop seeing Swarf come out, I think. Forwards. There's quite a bit of Swarf coming out. Uh, the reason we're doing this is because with such a thin a boring bar, it can flex. Uh, and spring away from the work under load so you have to do the cut multiple times even though you've got the same setting on the dial um, it still cuts because of that springiness in the in the boring bar uh, okay minus two and backwards plus four again point four and full. With the camera at the skew with angle you can see what I'm doing with the controls but uh, not that it's very fancy. Okay so uh, that was a 2.1 cut I'll go to minus 2 and reverse. It takes about a quarter of an inch to actually stop and then go forwards to Get a 2.2, but let's do this one more time and then forwards. It's wharf this time. Thread looks like it's forming very slowly. Okay, so we go back to minus two, do it one more time, reverse. Forwards to 2.1 again, forwards. This reminds me of dancing. We go minus two and reverse. When you change directions. And we've gone up to two, which was 0.5. Let's try that again. Uh, go forwards. Not taking match off. Perhaps we can try a bit more next time. So we go to minus two and reverse. Well, if you think that's boring, imagine how it was felt after two and a half days of doing this back and forth and back and forth. And as I approached the supposed depth, I would have to take the lead screw out and uh, check it in the hole and see if it would screw in, and it didn't. And I'd do it again for another hour or so and then screw it back in and in and out and in and out. For two and a half days, I was about to give up when suddenly it actually screwed in 
uh, started to screw on it, it was very, very tight, so I did one more cut and that was it. Um, it seemed to fit quite firmly. Since I installed it, it has actually loosened up a little bit. I'm um, not sure that I'm all that far ahead of where I was before I started, actually. And looking back on it, uh, 0.1 millimeters of uh, backlash really wasn't very much and um, probably didn't justify doing this amount of work. They say you just need to learn to live with the backlash and that's what I'm learning. I did make a video about that uh, recently too, so uh, that's worth having a look at and we're learning how to how to deal with the backlash. Something I didn't mention in the video is that I had the uh, insulation tape on the cross slide when I was using the the compound slide for cutting the thread uh, because those handles are so loose that they, with gravity, they just spin round and mess up your settings. So once I had set the cross slide where I wanted it for doing the thread cutting, I put a piece of insulation tape on it to hold it in place. And I still actually have that issue. It's uh, a bit of a problem that the handle on the cross slide, you put it in a particular position, next thing you turn around and see gravity's just pulled it down again and pull, pulled it out of alignment. Uh, I suppose it may be partly related to the, the heavy stainless steel handle I made, but uh, it's, it's very loose actually, and I might actually get around to making an adjustable nut at some stage. Now that I have the original nut as well as my homemade one, I've got the option of doing something to, that may damage it and uh, it won't be taking too big a risk. So the next question is, am I going to be game to do another one for the compound slide? I don't think so somehow. <laughs>